So what is eosinophilic esophagitis? Well, what is esophagitis? Itis at the end of a word means inflammation. So esophagitis is inflammation of the esophagus or food pipe. Eosinophils are one particular type of inflammatory immune cell that are typically seen in your blood, but they do not typically invade the lining of your esophagus. If you have enough of them do that, then it's called eosinophilic esophagitis or EOE. This is a relatively new disease. It was first described in 1993, so we don't know everything about it yet. What we do know is that it's an autoimmune disease that's closely tied to allergies. Many people with this disease have asthma or eczema or other allergic diseases. The inflammation in the esophagus caused by the eosinophils and EOE eventually causes scarring of your food pipe, which makes it inflexible and eventually can narrow the size of the tube itself. Now, this results in food often getting stuck in the esophagus for patients with this disease. If the narrowing and inflexibility is severe enough, sometimes food can get so stuck that it causes a food impaction. This means the only solution is for a GI doctor to go in with a scope and manually remove the food. Dysphagia, or trouble swallowing, is typically the first symptom in patients with EOE. This disease is most common in young white males, but others can certainly have this disease. It's important to treat the disease because if the inflammation goes on unchecked, then the scarring and stiffness can worsen to the extent that even a small amount of food could get stuck and tear or rupture the esophagus. Sometimes patients try to self-manage this disease by eating softer foods or even a liquid diet, but this doesn't help the inflammation. Medicines used to treat this disease include PPIs and inhaled steroids like fluticasone. Newer medicines like dupilumab can actually target the inflammatory cascade to stop the inflammation at its source. Other patients find benefit with the food elimination diets with the goal of eliminating food allergens that seem to be very common in this patient population. I discuss this more in my weekly newsletter coming out on February 1st. Thanks for watching and let me know which disease to discuss next.